Good morning. Uh, Wednesday morning. Nice, rainy, uh, dark, gloomy day. But if you like those nice, dark, gloomy days, uh, which I tend to have a propensity to sometimes, of just enjoying that, um, this is a beautiful day. I would like to read uh, from Acts 5, verse 33, 42. We covered some of this uh, on Monday morning, and we're going to look at it again before we move on to chapter 6. Uh, beginning in verse 33, it says, When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. So this was Peter's um, proclaiming the gospel, the resurrection of Christ, and the fact that they, the leaders of Israel, had killed Jesus on the cross. And that caused them to be pretty upset, apparently, that they wanted to kill him. And then in verse 34, But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to the men of Israel, Take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thedas rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan of, or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and the house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that in Christ Jesus. So uh, we have these uh, this court case going on. The apostles, all 12 of them, are... Um, brought before the leaders of Israel, the Sanhedrin and the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And um, as I explained on Monday, I see this as uh, the old guard under the old covenant uh, coming up against uh, the new covenant leadership. So Christ has established a new covenant, Corinthians says, that he was the uh, true Passover lamb who had been sacrificed for our sins. Uh, Hebrews talks about the old covenant being obsolete. Jesus came that he might fulfill the law, not uh, destroy it, but to fulfill it. And so we are seeing a transition time what has been God's plan up until the coming of the Messiah is now come to an end. And the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, establishes his uh, God's new covenant with Israel. And he puts in place his leadership for his new covenant, his church, his body. And that leadership is the apostles that we are seeing arrested here and standing before the old leadership, which has uh, met its uh, end. It's, it's, uh, will soon, in uh, a couple of decades, uh, be wiped away in the sense that the temple is destroyed and the sacrifices will come to an end. And in a sense, the, the old sacrifices of animals is no longer needed because the true Lamb of God who has uh, satisfied the wrath of God for sin, takes away sin, has come and has done just that. And so the partial, the shadows, the types uh, all cease to be necessary when the fullness 
uh, of it has come from God. And so this is kind of where we're at. And uh, of course, knowing that this is going on when you're in it can be a bit of a difficulty. When, when you are in the time of transition and change of something in your life, going from the old to the new uh, by the hand of God, uh, there might be a lot of resistance to embrace the new because you are familiar with the old, you are committed to the old, it has been what is right. And uh, having something new replace it is a time of turmoil. Uh, and transmission, transition and change often is, uh, is very tumultuous uh, in its makeup, in its nature. And such is what we see here. Uh, however, the grace of God has proclaimed the good news through Peter a couple of times, these men that were recorded, and they have had opportunity uh, they have the scriptures to uh, search those and uh, to do some soul searching and come to a change. Instead, they become more hardened. They didn't want to let go of what they had for what God uh, was going to bring in their lives. Now, you and I experience that in small ways all the time in our life. God wants, is going to bring something new into our lives and we may uh, resist and be in turmoil, uh, wanting the security of what we know versus the insecurity of what we don't know. So it's understandable in my mind to see why uh, some of the Sadducees and Pharisees and the Sanhedrin would respond the way they did. But we see in Gamaliel a, a, um, a wise way of approaching change in our life. And what we see in Gamaliel is he says, men of Israel, take heed, be careful. If this is of God, there's nothing you're going to be able to do to prevent it from happening because man cannot thwart the plans of God. If it's of men, it is going to come to failure in the end. So we don't need to jump into the fray and battle over this thing. Uh, if what we are saying is truth, we just need to proclaim what we believe to be truth and, and be uh, secure in that. And if it isn't truth, God will make that aware and his new plans will be established. Uh, and they listen to him uh, to a point. And their anger is so much they want to kill him but uh, they don't just say, oh, okay, let's let them go and let's see what happens. They beat them and command them to no longer uh, speak and preach in this name of Jesus. So uh, they still have this uh, ingrained resistance. Not all of them, obviously, but enough to cause this to happen. What is... Uh, most exciting to see is the response of the disciples. Um, they left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. So they counted it a worthy thing to be able to suffer shame and physical beating. Um, that is not always what we see happening today when persecution hits the church, especially for those of us in America, in the um, uh, 21st century church. But let me read from Paul's words in, in Philippians 1, verse 29. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ... You should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. That's an interesting statement, isn't it? It's granted to us the privilege, the honor, 
to not only believe, so we don't choose really to believe ourselves in Jesus Christ. We're elected into that, and God opens our eyes and empowers and enables us to believe in Jesus Christ. We can take no credit for our wisdom or our uh, choices. I mean, the fact that we had the gospel even presented to us was something that we did not orchestrate or invite into our lives, but it is by the providential sovereign hand of God uh, that the gospel has come into our ears and that the Spirit of God has opened our hearts to receive it. So it's been granted us to believe, but along with that, we have been granted the privilege to suffer for the sake of Christ. And these apostles here that we just read about in the book of Acts, that is how they perceived this. They, they uh, preached the gospel. Second time now that they've been arrested, all 12 of them now are arrested, all the apostles. And they're the, uh, standing before the leadership of Israel, uh, humbly uh, proclaiming the gospel that they have been commanded to proclaim and the result is they are beaten. Now, they're not privy to what Gamaliel has said. All they know is that these people were angry enough to kill him. They put him outside the council. They have a inner council discussion. They're brought back in. They're beat and told not to preach the name of Jesus. And they, they don't know that Gamaliel has said that if what they are doing of God, they cannot uh, be stopped. And yet they know that they are the servants of God, that they are the commissioned by Jesus Christ to proclaim the good news. They have humility and they have uh, a rejoicing in being beat for having proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ, for being believers in Jesus Christ. And they have that because they know who Jesus is. When we know who we are in Jesus Christ and what he has commissioned us to do, then we, like them, will count it all joy when we encounter various trials. And in fact, that's what James, in chapter 1 of his epistle, says to do. Count it all joy, brothers, when you encounter various trials. Peter goes on in, in 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, pray in so far as you share in Christ's suffering, or rejoice in so far as uh, you share in Christ's suffering. Then in, in the New Testament, through these early apostles and these men of God, uh, the church was exhorted to be excited and rejoicing in suffering for the name of Jesus Christ. Not just suffering, because they're not masochists, but in being able to share in that which their master also experienced. Because Jesus said, if they persecuted the master, they will persecute the disciples, the followers of the master. So the book of Acts is there to encourage you and I today. In this time of turmoil and upheaval in our country, uh, turmoil and upheaval in the church, let us proclaim the gospel of grace, the love of God, the mercy of God, extend it to sinners. And when there is a reaction, why, either from the world or even from within the church itself to those who are uh, proclaiming the blood of the cross as forgiveness for sins and the uh, faith in none other but Jesus Christ alone. Um, when we encounter the reaction of the world and even the church against us, let us rejoice. Let us not say, well, we have a right to do this, or um, you have no right to do something to us like this and begin to whine or complain or even demand our rights. Uh, but let us do like the early apostles. Let us rejoice in being able to suffer 
Now, Paul did claim his Roman citizenship at times uh, to his advantage. So using our citizenship in the United States of America and the freedoms that come with that citizenship uh, for the sake of the gospel to our advantage is certainly uh, to be recommended to us. But our response to persecution should not be self-protective, but it should be uh, done in a way only that is there to benefit the gospel. And for our own sake, we can rejoice in being able to suffer shame. Uh, and um, like the apostles, we will see the church grow as the Spirit of God convicts the hearts of the lost of the love of God for them. They're not going to see God's love in us if we have anger in our face or if we are uh, demanding of our rights the same way every group in the world is demanding their rights. But when they see us submit it to our Lord and Savior and, and laying our lives down for Him and for the love He has for the world, that will um, show them the nature and the character and the love and the grace and mercy of God. We'll uh, see you on Friday morning again, Lord willing. Bye.